uh, hoping to, to come meet in person, uh, I think back in March, and it was, I think we were a week away from, uh, uh, from the event uh, when, when uh, some of the, the, the flights started to stop in and, uh, you know, decisions were made and, and the big change. So it's glad to uh, finally meet here and, and get the chance and the opportunity to present. So, um, and thanks everyone for joining. Um, so as Mark mentioned, my name is Brent Hammettner. I uh, lead the U.S. marketing efforts here for DoApp, and I am uh, joined with uh, Amanda Strickland. She's a solution consultant for DoApp, and uh, I would say for the next, uh, I think we had the the hour uh, available, but I think our presentation will probably be about uh, maybe a half hour to, to 40 minutes, um, and in that time we'll be talking about the AP automation with machine learning. Um, and I think the reason we chose this topic is uh, because we think we'd, it's, it's become more relevant now. Um, I think as more companies in the past few months have shown uh, additional interest in expediting their financial transformation initiatives um, in which the AP automation aspect is, is one of the components. And so uh, in terms of uh, the agenda for today, uh, since the group is primarily the, the users and partners, we'll just start with a brief intro of DoApp. Um, go into why we exist, uh, why automate AP to begin with, and then uh, why machine learning. Um, then I'll go ahead and pass it over to Amanda, and that's when she'll provide an overview of the solution, and then uh, take you into the platform and, and show you the tool itself. And uh, of course, uh, as Mark mentioned, if there are any questions at uh, any point in time, feel free to raise your hand. And we also have a Q&A at the end if, if we want to use that time. Um, so getting into it, uh, as you might have guessed, DoApp is an AP automation company. We're based in Austin, Texas. Uh, so we focus exclusively on uh, the AX 2012 and FO uh, for the U.S. market. Um, our parent company is a company called Afima, and it's a Finland-based uh, Microsoft partner and system integrator. Uh, Afima has been around for about 10 years now. Uh, it's grown consistently year over year. Um, after about uh, six years in the business, uh, Afima kept Hearing some feedback from their clients, uh, mentioning a need for uh, improved workflows among some of the other challenges that uh, we'll get into in a second. And so they decided about uh, four years ago to enter the U.S. market uh, with an automated solution, um, hence, uh, hence DoApp. And I'm not sure how many folks here know about the AP automation market, but I mean, in short, it's quite crowded. So we usually get asked uh, what makes us different. And I would say based on what we've heard from uh, customers, I'd say we have three uh, main differentiators. The first is our uh, specific focus on the AX 2012 and FO ERPs. Uh, many companies in the space, they sync up with multiple uh, ERPs. And since our expertise uh, deriving from the parent company lies within uh, Microsoft, uh, we, we figured we'd just stick with it. Uh, and second, uh, we're an extended solution existing outside of Dynamics. Uh, so uh, as we'll see later, uh, it exists as an additional tab uh, next to the D365 and they can uh, run in conjunction with each other. And we chose this because it uh, really allows us a little bit more flexibility in the designing uh, design phase for what our customers want um, and not necessarily be uh, too dependent on some of the Dynamics releases uh, to make updates. Um, and then finally, I'd say uh, the last different feature is the native mobile app. Um, so we actually have, uh, there's one customer who uh, doesn't actually even use our, we have a desktop app and a mobile app, and, and one of our customers doesn't even use a de desktop app since the mobile is uh, is pretty convenient for them. So, um, and then in, in terms of thinking about, you know, why companies might want to auto, uh, AP automation, uh, we kept the thinking really quite simple and, and basically said, okay, AP uh, receives invoices, they process the invoices, and then they pay the invoices. And within this process, uh, there was actually a research company called Level, um, and they surveyed uh, some AP folks and asked them, you know, what were some of the challenges in this process? And what they found was that the manual, uh, manual data entry and manual routing of invoices for approval were the top two challenges and as we see in this graph and and typically whenever you see manual uh, and a challenge it usually indicates that there might be an opportunity to enter, innovate and so that's really where DoApp solution uh, lives and in terms of the the three main benefits that we see with AP automation uh, there's the saving time and money the scalability and the increased visibility into the AP process uh, for the saving time and money uh, studies show that it, it 
it costs about an average of about $12 to process a single invoice. I mean, when you automate, that cost can drop down to around $3 per invoice. Uh, for the time savings, uh, instead of having to manually key in the invoice data into Dynamics, um, one of the services that do have, uh, provides is a capture as a service. And so that uh, whole process of manually keying them in would, would already be done for you. Uh, for the scalability aspect, uh, DUAP, we tend to focus on the mid-market companies. A lot of our customers are in the mid-market, uh, and typically these size companies um, are going through growing pains. They may require software to uh, help them scale a, a little bit. Um, and then finally, the reporting capabilities uh, that we have in Power BI and the interface uh, allow a, a user to understand really where exactly an invoice is at all times, um, which helps in that, that increased visibility. And so uh, I guess getting into now uh, why machine learning and then specifically why machine learning in accounts payable. Um, I think the reason why machine learning is interesting is because it's, uh, you could think of it as a transition from process-based automation to data-based automation. Um, so in essence, what that means is we're moving from uh, your rule-based software uh, where a user might set up and maintain rules for automation based on a particular process uh, that they want to achieve. Um, I guess an example of that or a simple example might be, for example, an email client. If you want to send like an automated follow-up at a particular time um, or send it to a particular person at a particular time, you set up the rules uh, based on that, that specific process. And the difference with machine learning is that it takes in uh, is that it's database where it takes in historical data, it generates a model for itself, and then it will automatically recommend the, the appropriate process. And so for AP specifically, uh, this can be applied to things like uh, your coding as well as uh, the workflows. Um, and I guess with that, I'll go ahead and uh, pass it over to Amanda, and then she'll dive into the, the solution overview and then uh, show the tool itself with the machine learning capabilities. Go ahead and allow it. All right. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Amanda Strickland, and um, like they said, I'm a solutions consultant with Duop. Um, Brent kind of touched on it already, but um, Duop is a hundred percent paperless invoice processing platform. Um, we were built from the ground up in Microsoft's Azure cloud and designed specifically to integrate with um, Dynamics um, D365 FNO and X2012. Um, we live outside of Dynamics, as Brent mentioned before, um, but we integrate seamlessly and utilize the Dynamics master data and business logic in real time. And then we have the native iOS and Android mobile app, which I'll show you a short demo on here in a minute. Um, so what I want to start with is how the invoices get into our system. Um, we have we have a few ways. We have a full service capture as a service offering, and then we also have kind of do it yourself through one of our partners um, where you can manage the OCR on your end. Um, but there's still an element of machine learning within that. So our OCR platforms have, um, they take those invoices and they start building those templates and start learning where those pieces of data live within the image. And then we will build out um, from there, it automatically generates an XML. And so whenever we import the image and the XML data into our system, it's gonna automatically link those with vendor information, pull in the master data from Dynamics. It's going to pull in the company, the invoice amount, the currency, all of that for you automatically. So your AP people aren't having to go in and fill in that header data. Um, it takes out some of that manual work. Um, so once they get in, um, the invoices arrive into DUAP. And then they can either um, with our PO process, we can have it be fully automated. So if it's three way matched, all the invoice quantity, invoice amount is within tolerance, it can just go straight through, no approvals necessary unless you choose to have an approval process. And then with the non PO, 
you have their your invoice approval process. It goes through the proper channels. You get the the coding in, and then the invoice is approved. And I'm going to show you some of the pieces with the workflows and our um, our coding, um, the dimensions that we we do have machine learning um, associated with. It. So here's um, just kind of an overview of what what's offered. So we have an approval workflow that essentially lives outside of the restrictions of the built in dynamics workflows, and it's designed specifically for invoice processing. And I'll, I'll dive deeper into that whenever we get in there, but you can have conditionals. You can fetch from PO approvers um, if an approver is necessary, um, things like that. Um, we have the coding of non PO invoices, which can be coded to both ledger accounts or projects. The codings validated in real time against the account structure within Dynamics. For our PO matching, we have two way and three way matching of PO invoices. And upon import, if the PO is listed on that invoice, DUAP will automatically um, pull in any purchase orders or product receipts that are associated with that. Um, with that purchase order and if there's any deviations in price quantity or if the invoice includes any miscellaneous charges um, all those adjustments can be done within the do platform we also offer reporting through power bi and as part of the implementation process we customize a set of standard reports and we can also um, we also have a team who can build out reports in addition to our standard set that um, can be used to suit your business needs if our reports don't have um, a particular set of of reporting capability. Um, all the invoices are stored in a dedicated database in the Azure cloud, and you can also have an offline copy anytime. Uh, we keep detailed logs of the actions taken within the system, including an audit trail of all approvals taken on the invoice and any changes made to data in addition to any dynamics related messaging upon transfer, and this is all surfaced in the UI. So there is a spot where you can see all of the the actions that had been taken on particular invoices. And then since we're built within the Microsoft Azure cloud, we're continuously making sure that we meet the requirements for compliance. So here's a short um, overview of our mobile app. So whenever you enter into the mobile app, it's going to load up and it's going to load a stack of cards. So you'll see there's two invoices ready to be approved. Uh, you could swipe left to move that card to the back of the stack. Or you can swipe right if you know that you want to go ahead and approve that. So say you've already looked at it and you already know what's going on. Um, to, to get into the details, you can click. You'll see the details here. You can also do it by clicking on the menu at the top. You'll be able to see the full invoice image, the whole workflow, any comments on that um, coding. So you can actually um, do coding within um, the app. And you can also uh, return from here and change the workflow if you have those permissions. If you accidentally send it to the right, you can undo. Um, and then and that's basically the app. The other things that you can do within the app are you can. Um, so as I mentioned before, you can do the coding within there. So it's fetching those dimensions directly from dynamics within the app, which is something that kind of sets us apart. It's it's a pretty it makes it to where as Brent mentioned, you don't even need the desktop version if you don't want to for your approvers. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can assign a delegate um, to handle your invoices while you're away um, within the app itself, and you can set multiple delegates for multiple um, time frames. Here's a, some examples of the data that we're sharing in real time between the two systems. Um, so you'll see that you have your master data for the vendors, your account structures, um, any projects, um, purchase orders and product receipts, um, all of your users from the user table, um, all those types of things are are sent over. Um, the, the big pieces like the master data and the company's 
Um, those are imported twice a day. But then with your purchase orders, your product receipts, and your account structure, that's all a real-time um, fetch API um, call. All right, so now let's hop over into the system. So this is our basic landing page. This is what all of your users are going to see whenever they come in, but depending on their role, they may see um, different options up at the top. So it, you can see it up here. We have our modules. Um, I'm in as an AP um, and I'm also an admin. So I, I can see our admin menu. This is where you control all of your configurations. Um, vendor default. So if you want to default workflows for specific vendors for specific invoice types, you can do that all within the admin menu. It's highly customizable. Um, you'll see here that we have um, the workflow visible when you're coming in and this workflow is for your top active invoice. Now what what you're seeing here is um, is a Kanban style layout to where you have your previous invoices and these are invoices that you've previously handled and it's really useful when you select a um, an active invoice it'll filter out based on the vendor name so if you're coding a non-PO um, you would be able to look back on what you did previously for that vendor um, if necessary. You have your active invoice, which will automatically pull up based on an algorithm. Um, the invoice that it believes you should handle next. So typically your oldest invoice, it takes into account um, three different dates. Um, so the invoice date, the due date and the cash discount date. Um, and then you have your queue of next invoices. So here um, on the side, you'll see that we have the full invoice image. Um, we also expose the XML data if you ever needed to troubleshoot um, anything maybe not coming over like a vendor name. You could troubleshoot and see if maybe it was just it was named different. Um, so things like that. And then as I mentioned before, you have your your full history of everything that's been done um, on this particular workflow. Changes to data fields changes to um, movements in the workflow, comments it, comments added, uh, transferred to bookkeeping, any of that. Um, two things I want to highlight um, before I get into the machine learning piece of it is um, we, we have the our non-PO and our POs. So we have two different workspaces within Duat. You'll see that we have a PO workspace which pulls in, um, this is automatically pulled in this purchase order 2167 and the associated product receipt. If I needed to change that, I could do so by opening it up. I can X out of the ones that I don't want and I can select the new ones from the list. And these are only showing the purchase orders for this particular vendor. And then you'll see, I'm gonna collapse this real fast so you can look. Um, You'll see here that we have all of our um, our PO line information here. Um, anything that's uh, blue in this section, you can actually adjust. So if you need to do a partial, um, if this is just a partial invoice for a PO, you can adjust and and, um, and then send it along for approval. Um, you'll see here I have a difference of 95. That is because on my invoice, I have a miscellaneous charge. We can add any miscellaneous charges here in there, and you'll see that it, it adjusts that difference, and now we're, we're good to go, and we can send it along. Whenever you're ready to send it along, you can just press the check mark. If you have two invoices like I do up here, it's actually going to look to send both of them if they both are error free. I'm not going to send it yet because I want to show you the non-PO workspace. So you'll see here that we have our non-PO workspace. It's pulling in. Um, let me open it again. It's pulling in um, the dimensions that I had already set. But to go into the machine learning side of it, we have um, we have these little bubbles and it's going to start to learn 
what kind of coding you do for this particular vendor situation. So um, it's going to say 71% of the time you use these two. 17% um, of the time you use these three. 6% of the time you use this setup. So it'll start to learn what what you're using and what you're doing, and it'll start to get some better predictions of what um, what you should do and suggest those for you. Makes it a lot easier. You don't have to actually go up and look at these old invoices in order to see what the coding should be. Um, so that's super helpful. The other thing um, is, You'll see here um, as I select. Um, so we'll see we have all that selected. Now it's going to automatically pull in the account structure, like the available item groups within the account structure that I've chosen so far. So it's dynamically shifting what your available options are each time that you select a dimension. So it automatically fetches those. Um, the other piece of machine learning that we have you'll see up here at the workflow level so this is an example of one of our workflows um it it has a lot of the things so we have our accounts payable which is me and then we have our next approver but we also have it split out to where there has to be two approvers so it you can basically build it out to where if you wanted to have um, multiple lines of approval you could do that and then the ending approver person could be the same if you wanted it to be and they would only have to approve it once if they were the end but you'll see here that we also have this conditional so we can set it up to where um certain people don't really get um pulled into the approval process unless it's a above a certain amount of money um so if you have you know a hundred thousand dollars is is where you need mike to come in um and start approving things you could have it it go through without mike's approval until it gets to a hundred a hundred thousand dollar invoice and at any time if you have the the ability you would be able to change the handler um here's your fetching from po so we can have it fetch from order fetch from requester this doesn't really make sense in this non-po one but um on your po ones you would be able to do that um and then you'll see here we have those same bubbles and it's going to let us know how what workflow we typically use and like i said before with our admin menu um you have full control over setting defaults so if you have a bunch of workflow presets set up and you go in and decide that you want to have this workflow every time for this vendor for non-POs. Um, you can set that as a default and it'll pull in automatically. But then if there's some certain situations where you need to adjust that workflow, you would be able to do that and it would start learning that. And if you did it, you know, if it was like 10% of the time, it would start to learn like 10% of the time you have this other one and that would be available for you. So if you had lots and lots of of workflow presets like a lot of our customers do you don't have to go searching for those it would automatically let you know like hey this is the one that you're defaulting in but sometimes you use this other one and so it's very useful to um to make everybody's life easier for the the machine learning hey uh, amanda yeah well, there's a question from rich was asking does it respect the delegation functionality in ax so as far as um if there's a delegate set in ax is that same delegate going to be in here And if you want to unmute whoever <laughs> asked it, you can ask me or answer. He, he said yes, Amanda. OK, yeah, so it's it's a separate delegation, so it's not uh, talking to each other. But um, I think that is something that we're looking into is getting a little bit more. Um, more. Compatible with pulling in those kinds of things. 
Um, right now, it would just be um, adding a substitute for yourself up here. Um, and then they would then see that information here. But right now, it's not looking at the delegation within um, AX, but that is something that we're looking into. Any other questions? I know this was like a high level overview, but I can I can dig into some other stuff if anybody has anything. I'm gonna take silence as a no. I'm not seeing any more questions. I think we're good. Okay. Cool. That's a um, that's about it for my demo part. Brent, do you have anything else to add? Uh, no. I mean, I think that's for the most part everything that we had to share. And I mean, we have contact information. We could just put it in the chat after this. Um, but I think that pretty much concludes what we wanted to talk about. How how are people in the with D sixty five? I mean, as far as like. I guess it's acquiring that or, or, or the scanning of those invoices in or are they, you'd mentioned you have a particular OCR product, I think, but how, how are people typically doing that in D365 or are you seeing as far as what you're using as far as the tool to actually bring those invoices in? Into the, D, uh, over from do app, to D365? Yeah. So we do have um, a document transfer um, that will pull in any, um, the invoice image. So the PDF, it'll transfer that PDF image over into D365 along with any attachments. So didn't touch on that, but um, you are able to add attachments within DoApp. And when the when the invoice is transferred to payment, it's going to send over all the data, obviously, and then the invoice PDF and any attachments that are that go along with that. And so we have that um, available as well to have full full document transfer. Great. Does anyone else have any more questions or? Well, I thank you, Brent and uh, Amanda, for the presentation today. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, I'm sure I say that I'm I will share their your contact information too if they think of things later. Uh, again, this will be recording be put out there as well so people can come back and, and watch again if, if there's something they, they missed or think of something a little bit later uh, that they'd like to ask. Um, Sounds good. I will share my screen one more time here. Uh, there we are. Is it? Uh, um, thanks everyone for attending today's uh, virtual presentation. And uh, would mind you, we have uh, another virtual. Our next virtu virtual meeting is uh, September 17th on uh, D365 testing strategies and tools. Uh, Rangeline Solutions will be uh, presenting on that topic. Um, we're always interested in uh, your feedback and uh, topics that you're looking. Looking for us to, do you have interest in? We're, we're happy to organize that um, and put that together for you as your local chapter leaders. Uh, and certainly, if you want to become more involved in chapter, uh, reach out to me, and, and I can help you learn more about how to become a uh, more involved with the the local being a local chapter leader and, and helping put together these presentations like this. 
Thanks again, Brett, Brent, and Amanda for your time this afternoon. Um, and that's really all I've got today. So thanks, everybody. Well, thanks very much, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, guys.